Hi guys, I have received excellent response and feedback on my uh, blogs about about web time throw. Uh, some of the people asked me to make some video tutorials on uh, on, on this topic. So here I am. Uh, this is the first video in a series of videos uh, I'm planning to make on uh, about web time throw. Uh, to give you just uh, an overview of uh, the topics that I'm planning to cover in the coming videos. Uh, I will talk about uh, some introduction part in this video and then uh, the further videos I will cover you know, what are the different uh, user interfaces available in uh, WebDime Pro. We will talk about what is context and what is controller and uh, also look at uh, controller programming. Um, how do we display messages, um, how do we do translations and uh, also we will talk about uh, Know, component reuse, which is a very important topic in WebDime Pro. Uh, we'll see how the search helps are implemented in WebDime Pro. And what are the assistance classes? Why do we use assistance class? Uh, so, yeah, a lot of things to cover. Um, so, let's start with the introduction part. What is uh, WebDime Pro? Uh, it's a technology for development of BAP based ERP applications, uh, web applications, which means uh, you know, before uh, web app drive throw, um, if you want to access an SAP transaction uh, from your laptop or your computer, uh, you have to have a SAP client installed in your system. Right? There's no other, otherwise you can't access uh, a transaction. Um, so uh, now that is that's a problem because uh, if you want to, you know, access an application uh, somewhere in the world. Uh, Let's say if I want to access uh, my application from some other uh, uh, machine which doesn't have SAP installed, how do I do that? So the SAP decided to make their applications web-based applications. Now, but then web understands only HTML, you know, only the scripting languages, the HTML or the scripting languages. It doesn't understand a BAP. So now there has to so we need to convert a BAP into something that web browser understands right so that's where this web technologies you know the app has come in uh, come with this web technologies um, they've started with uh, something like ITS internet transaction server which is used uh, in you know older versions of uh, SRM component basically um, it's uh, there are two problems with the ITS um, you know the problem is uh, if you want to build UI in ITS, you need to know HTML. You need to know something called HTML B, HTML for business, which is an adapted version of uh, HTML. And also, you need to know, uh, you know, JavaScript, right? So, you need to know HTML, JavaScript, HTML B, and also a app. So, four languages which you need to learn, uh, which is uh, not quite good. And then, um, in SAPS. Uh, come up with uh, BSP business server pages which is used in uh, CRM very uh, you know very widely and uh, then they've come up with ABAP WebDream Pro there are two versions of WebDream Pro ABAP and Java right, so we don't we'll talk about only ABAP here so now what is the advantage of WebDream Pro is you don't have to learn you know a bunch of other languages you know ABAP uh, more specifically, if you know ABAP uh, object oriented ABAP oops, that's enough. You don't have to learn any scripting languages or the you know uh, any uh, HTML languages, so that's the good thing. And uh, so they have started this ABAP intro from NetWeaver 7 um, and uh, it follows MVC design pattern, which we'll uh, talk about in the next slide, and uh, also. The WebDream Pro has a you know dynamic user interface feature, uh, which means uh, let's assume uh, you know a requirement. Uh, the number of buttons that in, that uh, I have to display on the screen uh, depend uh, depends on uh, the day of the week. So on Monday I need to display one button, and on Thursday I need to display four, and Saturday I need to display six. Now obviously I can't change the code uh, every day. Right. So the system somehow needs to identify the number of buttons to display 
based on the day of the week right so this is uh, you know this is a funny requirement of course I don't uh, see these kind of requirements in real projects but just to give an example what is dynamic user interface so the user interface the elements on the user interface should change dynamically right you don't define the user interface at design time at runtime the interface the user interface is determined by the system based on some logic so you can do that in a web pro and web pro also supports reuse of components supports reuse of components which means uh, let's say I have uh, you know multiple requirements where one of the requirement is uh, you know the part of the requirement is common to all the applications maybe a selection screen right if the selection screen is identical across all the 10 applications that I'm going to design then you, you create one component which is very particular very specific to the selection screen and then you reuse that across all your 10 applications and so that is the reuse of components okay then uh, so that's uh, you know what webbrand pro okay uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about webdem pro architecture as I said in the earlier slide uh, webdem pro follows MVC design pattern MVC stands for model view controller this is not uh, something invented by SAP or uh, you know something used only in webdem pro this design pattern is used across a uh, lot of other technologies for example Adobe flex uses it so um, now let's talk about the view view is comes under user interaction layer which means uh, view is what user sees on the screen right it, it contains all the user interface elements it can be buttons it can be input fields tables ALVs or some graphs you know anything that user interacts with now the view doesn't care where the data comes from right it, it only displays the data that's it now comes to now come to the model model comes into business interaction layer which basically interacts with application data right? so it model generates the application data and it doesn't care where the data gets displayed right uh, you know the, the data might get displayed in a table or in a graph in in, in a LV in a LV or uh, in an input field or in a text view it doesn't care it just generates the data uh, now we see a problem here because uh, view doesn't care where the data comes from the model doesn't care where the data gets displayed so there has to be somebody to coordinate between this view and the model right? otherwise it's a mess so there comes controller now what controller does is it basically coordinates uh, you know, coordination it, it, it coordinates the view and model so if you see uh, when you do something on the view you click a button or you enter something in the input field there's a request response cycle that happens between controller and view right so uh, controller basically then uh, takes whatever you what the user enters in the in the view and then it passes on to the model so model uh, does its own you know logic own calculations and generates some data and it sends back the data to the controller so controller sends it back to the view to display to the user so what we're doing here is basically uh, you know you're hiding your application logic from the view right so for instance what, what does it mean is the model can be you know an RFC function module or it can be uh, you know a web service from a non SAP system it doesn't matter right? as long as controller you know the data gets back to the controller and the controller sends it back to the view so that's the MVC uh, design pattern hope okay uh, let's do some work now uh, SAP has provided us uh, with two very important components uh, WDR test events and WDR test UI elements uh, they actually contain uh, you know almost all of the UI elements that uh, we can use in above web time pro let's have a look at uh, you know one of those uh, components WDR test UI element sure 
show you that in the explorer okay yeah so what you have here is um, you know different kinds of uh, UI elements that we can use in uh, web dem pro for example text view right now it will show what are the different properties that you can set uh, in the, in the UI element properties like uh, for example text direction the visibility you can set you can set the width so you know the the important thing here is uh, if you want to understand a particular UI element or you know if you want to use that in your project and you don't know what are the different properties uh, that we you need to set or how the different pro properties uh, changes the behavior of the UI element you can come to this component and then uh, figure out where is that uh, particular uh, you know for example link to action time trigger you want to understand it you can change the properties here and then see uh, you know how it behaves right so this is very useful uh, in a web template component whenever I have some you know clarifications or have doubts regarding some particular UI element I'll always come to this and uh, uh, you know see how this works how the properties change the behavior of the UI element so that is for uh, you know the standard uh, delivered web template component and then coming back to you know let's create uh, the first web template application Uh, in the layout and I've given uh, the name as click me the ID of the button is click me and if you see here uh, you know the text we've given it as click me so that what comes that what appears uh, in the browser uh, right as a text of the button then uh, I'll link to the action handler so we'll uh, come to that action handler part later just uh, uh, you know so okay the thing I wanted to focus in this example is basically uh, about the rendering engine of WebDream Pro how uh, the ABAP code is translated into your uh, language which browser can understand right so SAP has uh, something called uh, uniform rendering uh, you know classes right so it's uh, net for NetViewer 7 we have CLUR underscore net NW7 and it has some local class uh, implementations and for each of the if you see uh, in the you know LCLUR underscore base you have method implementations uh, for each of the UI element like button caption checkbox whatever UI element that you find uh, in the layout so every UI element has a particular method implemented for it so I've added a button in the layout so uh, I'm just uh, you know I'm just going to place external breakpoint here okay uh, and then I'm going to run my application hopefully it will uh, trigger debugger So now, uh, if you see here, um, you know this bunch of code to for the button interface, and what we're interested in is this parameter, right, the HTML. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go to the HTML browser. So what I'm going this is the code that gets generated inside the rendering uh, classes, right? Now. To, to just to make sure that uh, this it's something that you know browser understands I'm going to take this code and then paste it in a notepad okay I'm going to save it as a HTML file and uh, I'm going to run that it 
So if you see here, you can see a text. Uh, this is the same text that I've given in the properties of the button. So what happened here is the rendering engine converted something that I've added in the layout to uh, something that browser understands, right? So uh, that's all for the tutorial, the first tutorial. Uh, the next tutorial, I'll talk, I'll talk about uh, you know, what is context, what is, you know, different kinds of controllers uh, in web control. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.